I'm glad you asked that, Chef. Nobody's really asking on the ground as a person. The Fifth Amendment of the Constitution protects him from speaking. My name is David Bruno, and I'm with the former Morris County Prosecutor, Bob Bianchi. We are partners at the Bianchi Law Group, certified by the New Jersey Supreme Court as criminal trial attorneys. We lead a team of former prosecutors who aggressively fight the government when our clients are charged with crimes. Today, we will be discussing a recent decision, State versus Hager, from the Appellate Division, the New Jersey Appellate Division, where there's a published decision on a very, very frequent and common legal issue that we experience as criminal defense attorneys, which is the initiation, the Miranda warnings, and whether or not somebody waives or invokes when they're given their rights. Bob, tell us a little about the topic and some of the things that you see in this case in general. Right, so listen guys, when you are looking at this kind of situation and you've been charged with a crime or somebody that you know has been charged with a crime, both defense lawyers and prosecutors are looking to make sure that whatever evidence was gathered in the case was done in a constitutionally permissible way. And one of our amendments that we often talked about, but people have such little knowledge and information about is the Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and the Miranda decision. Now, Miranda is an old case. And just to give you the broad strokes of what Miranda means, it's that if you are in custody and you are asked questions that implicate yourself and you have not been read your Miranda warnings as a result of that case, Miranda versus Arizona, then you can possibly have those statements thrown out. Dave, why is this so important? We knew this is prosecutors. We know this is defense lawyers. Many times people speak to the police believing they're gonna help themselves out. And in the end, they provide the very evidence that prosecutors use to prosecute them. And had they not spoken, the prosecution would not have been able to put a case together. Now, I just wanna say one thing. The Miranda decision and cases that have come about as a result of it is, is something that we say, Dave, gosh, it's gotta be 10, 15 times a week when we're speaking to prospective new clients. You re invoke your right to remain silent. It is the golden rule it, because not only does it protect the guilty, it protects the innocent from having statements they make misconstrued. You should always go to a lawyer. If a lawyer then determines that your statement to the police is worthy, then you can do it, but do it in a way that protects you from prosecution. So Dave, I mean, it's so important. It's very nuanced. There's cases and cases and cases about what being in custody means, what being asked a question means. And now we have this new decision that Dave is gonna uh, tell you about because my last point, Dave, real quick, is that even though the federal constitution guarantees you rights, the state constitution of New Jersey does as well. And New Jersey is notorious for being more favorable and extending rights to a defendant, which is good for a defendant and makes it harder for a prosecutor. And we certainly know that because we've prosecuted a lot of cases and we defend them now for our clients. Dave? Yeah, absolutely. Great points, Bob. And in fact, police are required to give Miranda warnings when there's two things, custody, when someone's in custody and there's an interrogation. And if they are interrogating a defendant, they have to give the warnings first. And what happens if they do it wrong, if they do it improperly, it could lead to the suppression of the statements, meaning that the prosecutors can't use the defendant's admission or statements against them. And one of the more frequent questions that we get in this practice is what if they didn't give the Miranda warnings? Does that lead to the dismissal of the case? And unfortunately, the answer is no. It's only about whether the statement is going to be used against the defendant. So in this case, the Hagen case, and this is what we're gonna talk about a little more, the case arose where a defendant was charged with three count indictment. And the defendant was arrested and brought to the police station. And while the police were giving the Miranda warnings, the defendant was interrupting, asking questions, and, and really making the police officer's job difficult. And while the police were giving the Miranda warnings, they skipped one. There's a series of rights that they're required to give. And because of the distractions, the police skipped the right. And then ultimately the defendant waived his rights and admitted to the location of a BB gun, which led to his arrest. Well, that was, the defendant was, was convicted and it went up to the appellate division and the appellate division reversed. 
and said there was a mistake. It was a mistake to admit the defendant's statements because the police did not complete the Miranda warnings and it went to the voluntariness of the statement. So this is a case which we're talking about, where there is an error in the administration of the Miranda warnings, it could lead to the suppression of the statements. And it is one of the main things that we look at when we're defending our clients. We, we mitigate our clients and humanize our clients for the prosecutor, but at the same time, we are looking through the police reports, looking through the state's evidence, looking at issues to exploit and defend our clients and this certainly is one of them. If there's a statement that's given, was it, did the, were the Miranda warnings required prior to the statement? And if so, were the Miranda warnings properly given? Bob? Yeah, so, you know, listen, everybody's seen it on TV. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. Uh, you have a right, by the way, to stop answering questions if you start and you feel uncomfortable. You have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, an attorney will be appointed for you. Um, so these are the basic rights that the police have to read. And in this particular case that Dave is referring to, because of the confusion, the officers missed one of those rights, which led to that case being thrown out. I want to talk to you guys about a very practical thing here that we know uh, as people who actually led investigations, major investigations, uh, as well as tried them, and now as defense lawyers. And it's called reinitiation. So it's a really important area of the law that you don't hear a lot of lawyers talking about, but it's something that happens and is so commonplace. Well, first, as I told you, the golden rule is should you ever be charged with a crime, you should remain silent, whether you're guilty or you're not guilty. That's the golden rule. But if you invoke your right to remain silent, there are times where the cops are processing you, they put their fingerprinting you and so on and so forth. They're going through all of that. And a client may decide to reinitiate. In other words, say, hey, officer, you know, I think I want to talk to you now. Um, and if they do, <clears throat> the cops have to reread you your Miranda rights. They have to make sure that you understand that you said you invoked in the beginning, but now you want to withdraw that and you want to speak to them. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something that's practical. So keep it in mind. A lot of times the cops will leave you there in that room and you're wondering and you're thinking and you're thinking and you're wondering <clears throat> and they come in and they're giving you a soda and they're giving you a, you know, a, a bagel or something to eat. And they're like, listen, we got to fingerprint you now, process you now. I'm telling you the way this goes, folks. This is the real world. Um, you know, now that you're not going to give us a statement, we have to do these things. And it almost kind of uh, it implies to the defendant that if you had spoken to them, they wouldn't have made the arrest or it kind of kind of gets them to start thinking that maybe I should speak to them again. Now, I'm not saying that police officers do this nefariously, uh, but it is something that happens. And then a person decides all of a sudden they're going to talk. So they got it right. The person in the beginning by it, invoking the right to remain silent, but then they reinitiated it. And that would be if the court deems down the road, a proper reinitiation reinitiation, then that statement can be used against you. So that's a really, really important uh, thing to remember because a lot of times people get it right in the beginning and then they kind of get nervous and the cops are coming in there and saying, you're going to get processed. And they say to themselves, well, maybe I can talk my way out of this. No bueno, as they say, not a good idea. Yeah. First of all, like you said, rule number one is don't give the statement to start. And then if you do invoke don't think that you're going to just outsmart them after you think about it. Also, Bob, um, if a defendant asks a question during the administration of the Miranda warnings, they're also, the police should be required to um, follow up on the question to make sure that the question is not going to the rights or the voluntariness. And sometimes they're ambiguous statements, which are required to be asked about and really interpreted. So there are various different issues to look at when assessing whether or not the uh, Miranda warnings were given properly and whether or not we could suppress. So we're, we're here for everybody. We are former prosecutors. We are in the criminal defense uh, side of things now. We're located in, Mo in Parsippany. And by the way, Bob, we're back in Morris, right? Yeah, we're back. To, go ahead to explain that to them. No, no, it's great to be back in uh, Morris County, uh, where I was the uh, head county prosecutor. Dave was in my major crimes unit as a, an assistant prosecutor. Um, we actually tried a murder case together here in Morris. We were in Essex County for a while. We love Essex County. But we're back in our home county now in Parsippany, New Jersey. So we're really looking forward to uh, our new offices are awesome. 
Uh, really looking forward to having a uh, great uh, remaining career. We're expanding, so we're really excited about what's happening at the Bianchi Law Group. Yeah, criminal defense, domestic violence, municipal court. We're hearing more, but we do practice in all 21 counties in the state of New Jersey. And like you said, Bob, we're expanding. So if you're a former prosecutor, if you're out in private practice or you're in the prosecutor's office and you want to join the team, we're a team of former prosecutors who aggressively fight the government when our clients are charged with crimes. If you need anything, give us a call. We're available 24-7 for everyone.